5.5, graphs of relations and functions. Okay, let's just do a quick review. In order for something to be a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. What that means is that if we draw, if we have a function, or if we start to rephrase it, if I have a graph, say something like that, check the vertical line test, I'm going to draw a bunch of vertical lines. And if a vertical line never crosses the graph more than once, you can see there, each vertical line only ever tells the graph, each vertical line only passes the graph once, I have a function. If I've got a case that looks like this, I do my vertical line. There's my vertical line. If you notice here and here, that vertical line crosses the graph twice. That is not a function. So here, identifying whether a graph represents a function, just do the vertical line test. That one passes. That one passes. Does not pass right there because we've got two spots where it hits. This one is not a function. I check this one over here. If I do that vertical line test again, pass, pass, it passes, it passes, it passes, it passes. None of those lines will cross uh, my graph more than once. So this one is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Example two, determining the domain and range of the graph of a function. Now, first of all, let's uh, remind ourselves what domain and range are. Domain, that's any x values that we can find the graph on. So, how far left and right it goes. Range, that's your y values. How much how far up and how far down your graph goes. So let's look at each of these and we'll find the domain and range of them. Start with this first one. Now a couple of details that I want to go through. Notice how this end has a dot. This end does not. To be more correct, that really should have an arrow saying that that piece was going to continue on, whereas this end with a dot stops there. Dot means that the graph stops. Arrow means it continues forever. Let's start with this question. Let's look at the domain and range. The domain. Now we've got an end stop right here. The highest x we're going to have is going to be three. But this arrow right here on the other side means that it's going to continue forever in the negative direction because this line will just keep on going up and up and up and up and up and continue on. So that is saying for our domain our max equals 3 and the min well there is no min. So how I would write that is it saying x is equal is anything that is less than or equal to 3. The main x is less than or equal to 3. Remember in the past we talked about domain as being between two things, but because this continues on forever in the negative x direction, x is anything less than 3. All right, let's do the range. So 
but let's figure out a max and a min. So, first of all, we know this is as low as it gets. It doesn't go any lower. So we've got a minimum of negative one. And the max, because we've got this arrow up here, it's going to keep continuing up higher in the y's forever, which means we don't have a max on the range. That means my range, R for range, talking about y, y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. It's everything bigger than negative 1. Let's look at this next one, much the same. Uh, when we look at it, we've got dots there. That means it stops there, it doesn't go on forever. So when we look at our domain, where we're talking about our x values, max, well, our biggest x value is going to be 2, and our minimum x value right there is negative 2. So my domain as a minimum of minus 2, x is equal to or larger than that, but it's less than or equal to positive 2. So what you're saying, x can be anything in between negative 2 and positive 2, because we find the graph all through this area right here. Let's do the range. Remember, these are my y values. Figure out my max and my min. So the highest y value we get to on the graph is up here. The maximum equals 2. But the lowest y value we get down here, it is 0. So when I write down my range, range is, start with my minimum, so 0. y is greater than or equal to 0 but then less than the max, less than or equal to 2. There's my domain and my range. Example 3. Determining the domain and range of a graph of a situation. So here we've got a graph that describes the number of fishing boats, n, anchored in an inlet in the Queen Charlotte Islands as a function of time, which is t. So question A says, identify the dependent variable and the independent variable and justify your choices. Well, independent is always on the bottom. It's always your x-axis, or in this case, our t-axis, which makes this one the dependent variable. So what we're saying is the number of boats in the in inlet depends on what time of day it is. Makes some sense to me. So part B asks, why are the points on the graph not connected? Why don't we have a line? Well, the main reason for not having a solid line is you can't have half a boat. You've either got one boat or two boat or three boats or three or four or five. There's no partial boats on the uh, on that. Now we can have part of an hour. So for the x-axis, that's not the reason. It's this y-axis right here where you can only have whole numbers of boats. So for B, can't have half a boat. If it was a solid line, it would mean everything in between those numbers is included. Whereas this, only the numbers at the dots are included. Part C asks for the range and domain of the graph. Get into the habit of always doing it in the same order. The mean is always my x values. Now this is going to be a little bit different. Because we have dots, 
domain is curly Q brackets, and we're going to list all the numbers it can be. We've got a dot at clock. We've got a dot at 10 o'clock. We've got at 11 o'clock. This is, and we've got a dot at noon. Using 24 hour time, so 13 o'clock. 1400 hours, 1500 hours, 1600 hours. Close it off those curly Q brackets. That's my domain. All those numbers are included in the domain. Range, we're going to do much the same thing. Remember, these are all the y values that can be found. Range is. I work my way up from the bottom to the top, keep them in order. So my lowest range is 6. Next up is 8 volts. Next up, 10 volts. After that, we've got this one, which is 11 volts. And this one, which is 15 volts. The only other one we've got is this top one up here, which is 25 volts. So notice how these two, there were two different times where there were 10 boats. That's okay, you only put it in once. Because all this is saying is 10 shows up on your graph someplace, 11 shows up on your graph someplace, 15 shows up on your graph someplace. Doesn't matter how many times it shows up, it's just saying that it shows up. So there's my range domain. And that's how you do it when you have points on a graph instead of a solid graph. Example four, determining domain values and range values from the graph of a function. So we're given a function, f of x equals negative 3x plus 7. We've got a picture of that function, so it has already been graphed for us. And all this is saying is, find the range value when the domain value is negative 2. Remember, range is y, domain is x. So it's saying, let's put this into a little better English, when x equals negative 2, y equals what? Well, so let's solve that. We go to the negative 2 on the x, go up and figure out what the y value is. There's my y right there, in between the 12 and the, four, uh, and the 14. The y equals 13. Next question. Similar, but different. What's the domain value when the range value is four? So that's like saying, when y equals four, x equals what? Okay, so let's look for the y equals four. So I'm going on the y-axis here. There's four, I'm gonna go across. There's my graph, go down there, and I end up with, x equals 1. So when my range value is 4, my domain value equals 1.